blah people. Do you remember in the 2012 campaign when we had blah people? What President Obama wants to do, his economic plan is to make more people dependent upon the government. I don't want to, to make people's lives better by giving them somebody else's money. I want to give them the opportunity to go out and earn the money. I don't want to, to make people's lives better. I've looked at that quote, uh, and in fact, I looked at the video, and I don't, in fact, I'm pretty confident I didn't say black. What I think, I started to say a word and sort of blew, sort of mumbled it and changed my thought, but I don't, I, I don't recall saying black. I was starting to say one word, and I sort of uh, came up with a different word and moved on, and it, uh, and it sounded like black. Rick Santorum, the 2012 campaign, trying to get away with the old, I wasn't saying black people, I was saying bad people. That old explanation. Blah, 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 blah. That was a strange moment in the 2012 campaign, but at least he tried to explain it away. I mean, usually when these things happen, there is at least some polite ambiguity. This fellow here over here with the, the yellow shirt, Makaka, or whatever his name is, he's with my opponent. And let's give a welcome to Makaka here. Welcome to America and the real world of Virginia. Welcome to the real world of Virginia, Makaka. That's how Virginia Republican George Allen spoke to this Indian American guy, born and raised in Virginia, who was videotaping one of Senator Allen's events. Makaka, what was that all about? It's pretty clear what that was about. Just like it was pretty clear who were the blah, blah, blah people that Rick Santorum was talking about. But at least there was some ambiguity about these things. At least there was a fig leaf. It's not that way anymore. I have a judge who is a hater of Donald Trump. A hater. He's a hater. His name is Gonzalo Curiel. And he is not doing the right thing. We're in front of a very hostile judge. The judge was appointed by Barack Obama, federal judge. I mean, frankly, he should recuse himself because he's given us ruling after ruling after ruling, negative, negative, negative. The judge, who happens to be, we believe, Mexican, which is great, I think that's fine. I think Judge Curiel should be ashamed of himself. I think it's a disgrace that he's doing this, this court system. The judges in this court system, federal court, they ought to look into Judge Curiel because what Judge Curiel is doing is a total disgrace, okay? The judge who happens to be, we believe, Mexican. The judge is not Mexican. The judge was born in the state of Indiana. The judge is American. But Donald Trump is more than insinuating that the judge is mishandling this particular case related to Donald Trump because of the sound of this guy's name, because maybe uh, we think he's Mexican. These things used to be at least a little ambiguous. Not anymore. Why antagonize the judge this in that is case? Because I don't care. In, in because you know what? Why antagonize? Because I don't care. I have a judge who's very, very unfair. Why well, mention that the because judge is you know Mexican? What? Because I'm a man of principle. The Republican candidate for president this year is flat out attacking a judge in a case Mr. Trump is involved in, and he's attacking the judge explicitly and unambiguously on the basis of the judge's ethnicity. He's been doing that for months with this judge. Even before that judge today released some pretty damning records about Trump University from that legal case, the racial attack by Mr. Trump against that judge, frankly, it, it crossed about a dozen Rubicons and then went back in and filled them in with bulldozers. Tonight, the head of Hispanic Media Relations at the National Republican Party just quit her job with the National Republican Party. She is leaving the RNC. Two RNC staffers talked to the New York Times uh, about this matter tonight, but, quote, requested anonymity to speak candidly about the difficulties surrounding the party's presumptive standard bearer. Uh, these two RNC staffers told the Times anonymously tonight that this woman who just left the RNC, who you see here, Ruth Guerra, uh, she had already said earlier this year to co colleagues that she was uncomfortable working for Donald Trump. And that was before Donald Trump started attacking Judge Gonzalo Curiel in front of roaring crowds uh, for the heinous, booable crime of having a Hispanic name and Donald Trump thinking he's Mexican. 
Joining us now is Rosalind Helderman, who's a political enterprise and investigations reporter for The Washington Post. She reported extensively today on these new documents that Judge Curiel ordered released uh, in this case about Trump University. Uh, Ms. Helderman, thanks very much for being with us tonight. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So it is, as I understand, it's basically thanks to The Washington Post that these previously sealed documents from this case have been made, made public. I, I realize this is an ongoing case. It's all still being litigated. But what do you think is the most important thing that we're learning from these documents? Well, what we received uh, was about a thousand pages that have been filed as part of this litigation, and it included uh, something called playbooks, uh, which were internal strategy guidebooks uh, that governed everything from sort of where you put the chairs for these Trump University seminars, but more importantly, uh, talked quite a bit about uh, how the seminars were to be sold uh, to, to potential customers uh, and how aggressively they were to be sold, encouraging uh, uh, that. You, that uh, potential instructors tell customers to put the courses on their credit cards, that tell them that money was, was not an object, that if people expressed fears of the cost of the program, they were to say things like, don't you want to improve your lives, that sort of thing. Uh, we also got some pretty damning testimony from some former employees uh, who said that they had quit because they were disgusted with the sales practices. Mm. I know there is a um, trial date in this case right now set for November 28th. Uh, in terms of where we are in the process of this case, um, if, thought experiment, Donald Trump wins the election in the first week of November, um, how, how likely do we think it is that we would see our president-elect in court in this case right after he's been elected? Well, uh, he could certainly argue uh, to avoid it, but uh, you know his testimony will certainly be sought, and there is a trial date, and so I think that is a, a likelihood if he were to be elected. Mm. Mr. Trump has uh, made a point on, on several occasions now, including just a few days ago, um, of attacking the judge in this case as biased. Uh, he has said explicitly that he thinks the judge's ethnicity is part of what makes him biased. I've, I find that just the... It doesn't feel like a political detail to me. It just feels politically remarkable. But legally, in terms of this course, this this case that you're following, is that attack by Mr. Trump on the on the judge is that affecting the course of this case legally? Did that arguably affect the judge deciding to make these documents public? I mean, judges are used to being criticized, and and uh, I would not imagine so. I mean, it's important to note that Mr. Trump's lawyers uh, have the right to seek to have the judge removed uh, to make a legal argument that he's biased and should not oversee this case, and they have not done so. Hmm. Rosalind Helderman, political enterprise and investigations reporter for The Washington Post. Thank you for helping us understand this tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll say that last point that Rosalind made is very interesting, right? Trump is out there on the stump saying this guy is biased, this guy is terrible, he needs to get off the case. Legally in the, court, in the courtroom, his lawyers have never even asked for that. Is it possibly because there isn't a great grounds for asking for recusal? Much more ahead tonight. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.